be photographed I'm or only filmed. photographing the people at the front. Okay. If you can just let people know then, because sometimes it's a bit, sometimes people feel awkward about being filmed. Every I, time I mean, we walk outside we're filmed. No, no, I absolutely take, take your point. You are, just, sorry? My name's Keith Hatton and I'm the Labour Partnership Coordinator. Okay. So if you just, if you just let people know, if I just introduce you at the beginning, you let people By know means, about that, is yeah. that alright? Yeah, that'd be fine, Keith. Fine, brilliant, thank you. So, yeah. can you make it Saturday at 4 o'clock? That's just the yeah. Oh, should be able to, yeah. Yeah, and you might need to sort out some kid things, but... Come here, come, right. come on. Sir. Is it all in yours, yeah? yeah? You have a nibble? Yeah, I can't remember what a sandwich <laughs> but yeah. Nibbles and sweets, I'm there, mate. Probably. Apparently you do. Let's put an X on who it is. <laughs> they can find you by your poll tax, isn't it? I have no idea. Some new dude. But he, he did try for a second and then then he learned his lesson about things. Okay, we have now switched on. Yeah, hopefully. Um, can people hear? Is that alright? Okay, thank you. Is it too loud? So I tell me if I get too loud. Okay, right. Um, welcome to the Labour Mouth Labour Forum. If um, anybody who hasn't signed in would sign in, that's really that's that's really helpful. Um, has everyone got sight of an agenda? Yeah? Okay. Right. So, um, in that case, there are some people at the front. And also, there's a gentleman at the back who's done all me. Do you just want to say a little bit about, about that? Good evening, everyone. Um, just to let you know, Eric Pickle said on the 6th of August this year that the public can videography and uh, take photographs of all council business and public meetings. So uh, that's what we're doing, okay? If you're not in the front row, you won't be recorded. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I just wanted to do some introductions. My name's Keith Houghton, and I've just started, just before the, um, before the summer holidays, as the neighbourhood partnership coordinator for Amy Mouth and Kings Western. So you'll be familiar, some of you, certainly with Hayley Ash, and then Joe. Um, Joe Holmes was the Labour Party coordinator for um, <coughs> seven or eight months or so, and I'll just take it over. So, thank you very much for having me, and I look forward to getting to know you and to working in Abraham and King's Western. Do you want to um, introduce yourself? Good evening, I'm Abby, I'm with the local PCSO just for the area. Obviously, 
you read over email and try out of, as a whole, uh, and in the past three months there's been 322 crimes reported for the whole of the area, that includes the industrial estate. But breaking that down into some of the areas which um, we look at quite closely, burglaries, we've had 12 um, burglaries across the whole of the area in those three months, five of which have been in Avermouth, um, and some of those are, well, most of those are going to be sort of big um, shed breaks or garages that have been broken into, so they're not actually homes as such, they could be um, sort of non-dwelling breaks. Uh, vehicle crime, that's 40 across the area, uh, Avermouth and Shire, that's eight for Avermouth. Um, shop theft, that's only um, a big priority for us at the moment. Um, we do suffer with that a, a little bit across our patch, um, and Big Mouth Co ops had 10 in the past three months. Excuse me, are you saying all the rest then for Shirehampton? I mean, like, sorry? This always worries me that we are down the Zabermouth ward. I know, I just had a chat to Amanda, and I do know that this, we're now talking Zabermouth. But this is what puzzles me. We should be seven, so I believe, not eight, because everyone talks of Avermouth and we're talking Avermouth board. Now, if you're saying out of here, 41 thefts, 10 in Avermouth, are you share, saying the other 31 are all in Shire? I don't understand that. Over the past three months, yeah. 31 in Shire? Yeah. That's taking that can't be the same perspective. You're not talking Avermouth ward, are you? No, you don't seem to understand. Avermouth Ward does not just cover Avermouth. Well, that's why we're trying to break it down, but we aren't just Avermouth Beatty, we are Avermouth Yeah. Well, where are the other 31 then? But all Shirehampton. All Shirehampton. Yeah, it's all just Avermouth as well. Yeah, that might be It kind of puts it in perspective for us. The right pike is up in Shire. Is that the thing you Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, obviously, we did. Sorry, we've been doing some um, work around our drugs and drugs problems. Um, obviously, we can't go into too much detail in relation to some of the things we have still got ongoing because that takes time to sort of build up pictures for us. Um, but there is a, a little bit there on your, your bit of paper in relation to a couple of the arrests that we have had. Um, Lamplight is part that's opening at the end of this month, hopefully, um, and they're engaging well with us and um, hopefully we'll be popping along on their opening night for a couple of drinks. Um, in relation to antisocial behaviour, uh, we've been doing a lot of work in relation to Avonmouth Park um, and some of the problems with drinking within the park. Um, some of the people that are coming off of the boats who are causing a bit of a nuisance within the area as well. So we've been doing a lot of work in relation to that over the last couple of weeks, um, and that's quite ongoing as well. Um, so hopefully you may have seen a little bit of a, a difference over the last couple of weeks, but that is more of a long term problem that we're trying to resolve at the moment. Um, but that's really it in relation to the work we're doing. Um, has anyone got any questions? What are you doing about the prostitution that's starting to happen in the night? Hey, what? That may be something you want to come and speak to us afterwards and give us some of that information. Yeah, go on. Yeah, 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 So would I, in a different kind of... <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
just to clarify, just as a new person, which church she means? St. Andrew's. It's obvious to everyone. Well, I mean, yeah. the bus drivers have a problem. Obviously, if we're open, the bus drivers are welcome to come in the hall, but they're not always there. Okay. He was on about uh, Seaman over the park. Yeah. I don't think that is Seaman. Uh, it is. No, no, it's, it's foreigners, but not Seaman. If they're all off the boats, they come down the lane every single day. What are they? Uh, they're foreign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what country they all come from. Yeah, but I, I see, I see, lo I see every local lads the other day over there, sat in the morning you drinking. Just, like, listen, because I'm trying to tell you, they are some people off the boat because we've caught them, we've spoken to them, and we've spoken to their captain. We're not saying it's just them. There are residents of Eighth Mouth that are doing that as well, and we're yeah. taking that as a whole, but there are people off the boats that are doing it as well. Well, I've never seen any, um, what, what do you call them, Filipinos over there at all. Well, we have. Yeah. Have you? On a yeah. number of occasions in the past three weeks. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had enough money to go on the, bit, on the booth. <laughs> any, anything else? Well, is the police station shut down or not? Uh, the front office is shut now. Um, we haven't been given any particular dates in relation to the police station shutting at the moment. We think more of a long term, uh, the plan is for eight mouth to shut, but at the moment we've not been given any dates. Can we ever see a policeman? No. No. We've never seen a policeman. I've 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 never seen a um, and I've been changing shifts to, to kind of late shifts, to be in the part of the particular issues that we're going on. Yeah. Okay, so this gentleman just here, I thought there were a little bit trying to do it, so I think we should have thrown the first and second. That's the front office. So we've got no front office staff, so the front office won't be open. So what should we do then? We need somebody there. The hatch phone still works outside, or phone 101 or 999, and as we go around the back. Um, we can't guarantee someone's going to be in the office because we could be out all on our beats because it's not just eight mouth staff that work from eight mouth, it's not just and river. And then I'm extremely sure so I get the major drinking forks. Would that be station? They got their own police. Yeah, I know they've got their transport police, but they're. So I just restated. So I just agree to restate what we just said with Mike and people here. Uh, the gentleman said that he thought he, it was extremely short-sighted, a uh, major British port for that police station. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, that's you know not a decision that we make at our level. Yeah. Um, if you've got concerns, I would really suggest to sort of write in um, and make your opinions known, perhaps even through your local councillors as well, mm -hmm. about it. And Matt. <coughs>
Can Thank you. Can I just check? Because that seemed to be quite an important point that Matt just made at the end about what happens to the building, uh, the, the police station building. I just, what occurred to me is, do you want us to, from the forum, pursue that and try and come back with some answers around that, or at least some, some outlines? Because, yeah? Okay, so we'll take that away as an action for us to follow up and bring back. Who owns the building? Is it the So it's whoever he said it to me. Yeah, it's actually a copy of the order to me. Right, but, but that, you know, presumably, that's a question that could be had, because the City Council owns buildings, but it doesn't always sell them, for example. So it really needs to be discussed before they sell it, who they're selling it to. Otherwise we shall end up with the mess that we had with the Avermouth bus depot. Mm -hmm. Right, so... It so, really upsets us. Okay, so I will take that back and talk to initially Mark Runnikers, who's the um, <coughs> sector inspector for this whole area, and, and start a trail of inquiry about that. Okay. But can, can we go back to the one that you said we we're going to bring to the topic tables, which is what we're doing about prostitution? Because I think a lot of people in this room have got family, children, whatever, living here, and can remember the prostitution in the past when it was a big problem, and I think it is a major concern not to be skirted around just taking to a topics table. Not that I'm saying that's what you're trying to do, but it is a major thing that I think the majority of people in this room would like to know more about. Well, yeah, at the moment we can't give you anything because we need to know that information ourselves, so if you can let us find out that information first and we can come back to you about it, or you know, if you guys want to speak about it yourselves, but we can't make any comment because we don't know at the moment. Can I make a suggestion about that? Because one of the other tasks that um, forums do is they ask the police to prioritise three key issues from the community. So it seems to me that firstly, when we break into the topic tables, those of you who've got some information or some insight into what's happening with concerns, because you live here every day and see what goes on, that's an opportunity to go and talk to, to, to the police and let them know so that they can start to build that picture. And secondly, you could make that one of your priorities for the police to just explore and develop more of a picture of and maybe to come back based on what you find out with some kind of a, of a plan for how you want to move forward. Because there are other parts of the city you've dealt with those kind of issues for a long time and are you know, pretty geared up around it. So there will be already pieces of ways of working that have been proved to be effective. So I just wanted to just float that. So do you want to go ahead, would that make some sense, what I've suggested? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Okay, so go and talk to them. I think that we've already got a priority there, is that all right? Have you got any other priorities you want to either propose or take to the floor? Are you, is everyone happy with the continue with the antisocial behaviour around the park and the church? Is everyone yes. happy with that? With that, although you're obviously looking into it in private sector, are there any curfews or anything being spent or legal influence in the area for that? No. No. We're with the yeah. we're, we're we're evidence at the moment, yeah. uh, speaking to as many people as we can. Um, obviously, it's very different legislation because we're talking about adults with alcohol, so we don't necessarily have the powers to take alcohol from them. Um, and at the moment, the people who we are speaking to are leaving the park, but we're telling them to leave the park, but we can't enforce them to leave. So we're building that evidence in relation to say, yes, there is a problem in the park, um, and then look to um, down the line to get perhaps a no drinking zone within the area, that sort of thing. But it takes time to gather evidence, look at those problems. Well, you've got to have evidence and a problem before you can enforce that. Yeah. Okay. Can we still remember Richmond Terrace and the lane though? Because yeah. that's where they're coming to and from. Yeah. So yeah. I've been using. I know you are up to the he, other park because I don't want to run them to back down up back there up. because he's just put in car. It's not, is it? But no, we'll, we'll continue yeah. with the plan. We have eight months been park really quiet and, and okay. Richmond Terrace into that park. Um, but is everyone still happy with our continued approach with how we're dealing with it at the moment? It's been brilliant. Right. And the, a third one is a third one you want to propose or that's negotiated with the floor? I think the toilet issue is a bit of a worry, to be honest. Yes. It's it's again, the toilet issue is comes in under the anti-social behaviour banner. Um, yeah, but I mean, it, I, 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 I
understand is I'm just so sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Are we allowed that one of those we said gives a little point of use and if you do pull somebody, you've got no excuse because there is somewhere you can't say, well, look, where, where can I come? Oh, sure. You've got something I can look at. Everyone's. Yeah. That's it. Why are you shredding this? It's just simple. There's a lot of people drinking water in the city and they managed to keep it in the trash and not in the accidents. Whereas we want to buy a toilet and we pay for a pool in the Remain Park so that they can. You know, urinate freely and then stay in that park and drink and have a nice toilet up basically. We don't want them in the park drinking, we don't want them in this area, we want to go back home, mm -hmm. you know, go to their own toilets and drink on their own settee, go to the and make people with to be fair, Matt, there, there are people, it's not just, is there ordinary yeah, people who no, need no, the toilet as well? I can't to keep the toilets open and I will carry on and you can investigate that toilet, we will do that. So I'm talking about a, a, a urinary and people, a gentleman that are drinking in the park. Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. It's not the sort of image you want to give the park. Yeah, but, but we, we, this, this was urine. never an issue really, was it, when we oh. had the toilet? No, absolutely, yeah, a, and again, that, I love that toilet, it's a great, it's a big toilet building. And, go and anyway, 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 also, we'll celebrate that it's a big toilet building, a lovely one as well, so... But for some reason it's forgot back then, and so I'm not happy with that. But I'll keep trying to investigate that toilet and get it reopened. But for me, I think it's a bit disappointing if we're going to help these people sit in the park and drink bars and cider and lager and give them a toilet to pee against so they can stay there a bit later at night. Whereas other people in the city and other places in, in our ward, they manage to keep in their pants and go home and go to the toilet. And I just think it's a bit yeah, frustrating. It's, it's not just people who are drinking. People I call are ordinary people who will probably have never broken the law in their lives. No. They just yeah. cannot wait any longer. Well, you know? That's, that's, that's true. Yeah. Right. This centre is open. It's yeah. the first time yeah. day, five full days a week. Yeah, Georgie can, Georgie can spunk 40 grand a day on, on Make Sunday Special. You know, these are public services. They've got a public toilet in they've got a public toilet in Shirehampton. Yeah, but they've still got one. Okay, so it, can I suggest something? I know it's it, when, when um, you have a lot of things to say, you just want to say it, but it does get quite confusing for people to listen to. Would you be okay if from now on you went through me as someone who's chairing this? It would just be, it would just make it a bit clearer, I think, and kind of keep it perhaps moving on. Thank you very much, yeah. You've done very well. What I'm saying is, this, the bus, all the buses terminate here. They right. don't terminate Charlotte, they don't ter terminate in Lawrence Weston, do they? They terminate here. Okay. So where are those bus drivers meant to go? Right. So that's they can't go shooting off up to the miles or over here or wherever, yeah. can they? So as far as bus drivers are concerned, yeah. that's we a valid the problem question. until it was closed. Um, I suppose the thing that occurs to me is that I don't know in terms of things like cafes that are around this place, etc., etc. They're not open 24 7. I no. think the buses are going all the time. No, that's true. So there's but always going to be a limit there. Exactly. That's true. But I suppose there's something during the day if we kind of mapped out a bit more what is open at what time. Because the other thing is that sometimes shops and uh, services, cafes and things don't like it very much if people just go in just to use their toilets. Do they? But in a kind of world where there are going to be fewer public facilities, it's, that, that, that is often the way that people have found a way around it. So it's also older people often find it quite difficult or you know, needing to, to go to the toilet while they're out shopping, etc. There's, there's all sorts of needs, like children, lots of needs, aren't there? So, it, yeah. Can we just clarify why they're closed then? Are they closed because council transport is run up? Are they closed because people are using drugs in that? I've heard different versions and reasons for why we're going to the first place. Yeah. That toilet was closed about six or seven years ago now, and it now has no toilet facilities in there, so it costs something like 20 to 30,000 to bring it back up. The whole do it needs replacing as well, it's not safe. So you could look at it, um, but I think. The mayor reversed the decision on closing the existing ones, and we managed to keep all of those. And I understand they're not here, but I think it's a struggle. But it is a worthwhile cause, but we can look at it. Um, I remember 
people did complain that there was antisocial behaviour in the toilet, some people, but I don't know if got any of that. I don't know. Yeah. So 40 grand, one, one day, one makes Sunday special. Okay, um, obviously any move around the station is, is, is you know, quite a long term and, and quite expensive thing to do, but there is a shorter thing that could happen in terms of just what is the rate available and when. It's a bit, just a, a simpler thing to do in terms of just having a conversation with the different organisations and groups and uh, cafes, etc. I'm still having the bus driver, so I feel very sorry for them. Okay. Couldn't they have a key on the bus that would open the port to the door or something so nobody else could access it but them? Um, as as no, are you talking about portable? You're talking about portable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's probably a conversation for us to have with folks, yeah. you know, it's, it's their company. Their company. Yeah. 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 Their company. For their staff. I mean, I don't know what their staff report back to them in terms of yeah. we end up having to go to the bushes because we need to go for a few or anything. So. No, I mean, if you start getting onto the drivers, next thing we know, the, the buses aren't going to be stopping here, are we? We should be without our buses. We do very well for buses. No, I'm, I'm not about getting on to them. I'm talking to first was to find out, do they get lots of reports of people really dying for pee and then they have money services? Because if, if, there, if there was a porter, was a porter loo to be provided, I kind of looked as first was to, to do that, really. I uh, happen to know the chief union loop for the uh, first bus group, so uh, I'll ring him one again and ask him. And so I'm going to try and follow up with him. He's had a report on his plans. But I do agree with what Keith said. I mean, if there's a bill to be paid for the uh, first bus driver's only thing, it should come out of the first bus group. You know, money coffers, not our money, basically. But again, yeah, I will find out and report back next week. Can we talk to each other about that? Yeah, all right. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, should we draw that one to a close then? So thank you very much. Uh, great, so if we can just move on then to the next bit of the agenda, and um, I don't think I need to talk for 10 minutes because there's some other people who've been much more deeply involved in all of the, the environmental issues that you know, have been such a big issue for you, I know, in Angel Mouth over the whole of the summer, really. Um, I know that some, you'll see um, that there have been some bulletins that have been produced to kind of update people. So that's on everybody's chair. Um, and this is actually not numbered. It's sort of, I think this is, this is the second the, This is the second bulletin. So the, the first set of bulletins were delivered door to door to every household around Avonmouth over the summer. And there's a lot of conversations and door knocking and, and talking with people. But I also know that there have been some, um, um, there's been a lot of attention and conversations with the port, with the environmental agency, and um, Bristol City Council, senior strategic managers in the city council, um, to try and move a lot of these issues on. And the intention has been that some of those have improved. Some of the issues, as you'll see, about air quality monitoring are in place. They're not in a position yet to report back because it's taken take time essentially to um, monitor it across cross it as described. Um, and I also know that Christine Chard has been part of a group with some residents who um, did a lot of campaigning around these issues and who's been meeting with um, um, some, of the, some of the senior council officers. So, um, I wanted to ask her to do a report back, which is what I understand that that's what, um, is Christine here? So I don't, thank you, are Christine, are you? Nice to meet you, thank you Christine. So in your bit on the community update, if you'd be happy to talk from your point of view about the, the meetings that you've been attending, would that be okay? To be fair, there isn't much to add to the, the bulletin that we've given out because this was given to us last week right there are a few things on here that came to light at that meeting that we as a group and there was about was half a dozen of us christine do you want to just come to the front there because we might as well do that bit now if that's all right <laughs> 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 only if ian promises not to film because i am fully me <laughs> 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 i don't know what to say about that <laughs> 
I haven't got any makeup on either. Just... I stuck you on the ceiling, Chris. Oh, thanks, Ian. Oh. Really, people can hear. Yeah, it'd be great. Great for the camera. I'll hold it for you. I love you. Uh-huh. Can I hold it for you? I don't think that we've made these bullets and skin mag last week, so we grabbed a few to bring some out because we weren't sure there was going to be any here. There isn't an awful lot to add. It's set that we are still getting problems with flies. Nothing has yet been clarified about it. We know they're still loading our DF out from here. We think from investigations, the majority of it seems to be coming from newer solutions, although there has been a few little walks from the sewage plant, but the majority of it seems to be coming from the direction of newer solutions. We know there's boats being loaded this week with RDF, so we're keeping an eye out for more smells, more flies. The flies are still definitely around, despite what everyone says. Especially when the bin, bin empties turn around and say we get more flies in Avon than anywhere else. <coughs> we certainly made our points well and truly made clear there. We were originally told there was going to be three monitors one down by St Andrew's Road service station, that area of the docks, one behind King Street, one by Elliot Workspace on Victoria Road. In their infinite wisdom, they spoke to experts after they told everybody where these awesome monitors were going to be and after they showed the maps and the plans that we put out and shown people that we could get hold of to say this is where the monitors are going to be, they spoke to experts after the event. The experts have now decided we don't need three monitors that we can triangulate results, we need two. So questions were asked about how you can triangulate with only two monitors. They say perfectly well because these monitors are 360 degrees so they'll take anything from it. So we're now left with a monitor in King Street and one that was supposed to be at Victoria Road up by the park on the right side, which is now in Aiden High School. So they've completely changed everything. We won't have any results until November, December, is when they're going to start collating all the results, so we're not going to hear anything until next year in reality. We were originally told these monitors were up and active from the 18th of August. We then found out last week that the one in Aiden High School had only just gone in and wouldn't be up and running until this week. So if they don't know what we're doing, we've got no chance. All we would say to everybody is keep reporting any dust that you get anywhere. If you see any dust, there's good numbers on there, ring and report it. Because without that, they're not going to know. Despite the fact we've been told by the Environment Agency at one stage in, an, in an, a handout that they don't need us to ring in because they've got the monitoring in place. We pushed this last week at the meeting and we're told, yes, do ring in, keep us informed. So keep bringing the council, keep bringing the environment the agency, keep the pressure on regarding the smell, the flies and the dust, because if we don't, they ain't going to listen. <clears throat> Can I just ask you one question, please? It's been mm -hmm. concerning me for months. It's, it, there's a smell that's coming over here from this direction, north, west, which smells similar to toast. Have you, has anyone else smelled? That will be, that will, that will be, that will be the grain people on Esperth, just it down here. It smells just like Yeah, we call them again not. today, operating without suppression. Yeah, they're tipping outside on the dock. So that is it, is it? That is your toasty smell. Yeah, well, it's a, yeah, it is a toasty smell, yeah, but it's not that, it's definitely Sorry, not. can I just summarise that answer? I didn't quite get it. There's a toast smell. Yeah. I don't have a coffee smell. Well, it's a smell. It's smell. It's smell. It's breakfast. It's smell. It's breakfast. It's smell. You get a big bean smell. It's a toast. Can we just listen to Ian's summary of what that is? Yeah, yeah, sure. We've been, we've been investigating this along with the noise issues from Sims, the dust issues from both Boomerco and the coal board, yeah, which is why we believe the council haven't put the third MMF down um, at St Andrew's Road gate end, but we've yet to, to, to gain a view from the experts on that. Now the grain people are tipping out at the end of the Gloucester Road gate area. They're tipping out on the dock. They've been provided with after a lot of pressure by residents over the last three years, they've been provided with um, steam guns or mist guns, if you like, to, to bring the dust down so that they can do it outside. Yet again today, we caught them at 4.30 p.m. not using that, and that was reported to the dock. So keep your eye out, keep the camera phone. If you've got one, take a photo. All this evidence is extremely useful. Most well, definitely for, the toast. Well, it certainly smells like toast when it's ground up, <laughs> it's ground up wheat.
I, I, I could have sworn I would have bet you that it was toast, but it wasn't. Thank you. Because it comes further down, I walk further down here and it's still there. And it comes, a, in, in my garden, particular garden, is like a sun trap, which I sit to get, and if it catches there, it's quite sickly. Mm. And that's right at the end here. And it's a sickly smell, but it's definitely, you would, you would say it was toast. You can see the clouds of it. So Ian, can I just check? So are you saying that they, they when they're unloading it, they're supposed to do something to kind of mitigate that. Briti well. The British Materials, sorry, yeah. yeah. The British Materials Handling Board regulations okay. um, state that um, any dusty cargo must have all um, regulations applied to it to make minimise the dust at source within transportation and at delivery. Right. And, and that I is the responsibility of the key wall supervisor on the docks, right. who is based on the dock with his PPE, um, personal protection equipment, right. we can see him from the gate. Yeah, venting it all over Aid Mouth without a care in the world. And so you don't think they are doing that? We know they're not doing it. Okay, okay, that's quite important for us to record that report because we can take that back because we know that there's this meeting that's going on. So thank you for that and the explanation is really helpful. It's on our YouTube channel. What, sorry? It's on our YouTube channel. Oh, okay. And on the Abe Mouth Dust Forum on Facebook, if anybody's okay. not heard of it, join it on Facebook. If you've got Facebook, there's lots of information there. Okay, thank you. The other thing we've noticed is that since these monitors have been put in place, Sims Metal have now got water hoses that they're supposed to be using when they're loading and unloading to keep their dust down. So how are they going to get true readings when things have suddenly changed and when the monitoring is only in for three months when we've said it needs reading to be in for 12 months to get a whole cycle of a year, we can't fully understand. So we're a little bit concerned on that as well. So anyone that would like to add some bits or contact people concerned with their ideas on that would be wonderful. We've also still getting explosions from Sims Metals. I don't know if anyone heard one today. Well, we've been to see nearly jumped out of our seats when there was a big explosion from there, when they're not defueling all their uh, cars and things correctly. So we are still getting fantastic explosions. So it's like being in a war zone if you live down there sometimes. So we're a little bit concerned. We also raised the point of the trees that have come down along Portby Road because that's a noise and dust barrier. We also chased up about the fact that day group is supposed to be coming in with incinerator bottom ash, and nobody can give us any more information on that at the moment. So we're a bit concerned about that one as well. So if anyone else wants to know anything, we try and hard, but do keep an eye on the forum. We've also asked that the next meeting that the council wants to have with a few residents, with the Environment Agency, we've asked for Public Health England to be there so we can raise health concerns again. Um, and we've also asked for it to be before this next forum meet, the next forum meeting, so that we can report back to the forum meeting. Thank you. That's very helpful. Any, anybody else who? Yeah. Uh, so I would uh, try to yeah. turn you yeah. back. Of the first paragraph, insufficient good analytical analysis on samples, not enough collected. Sorry, if you're doing, if you're analysing the substance, you make sure you've got enough stuff to analyse. The problem with that is it's not the environment agency or the council collecting the samples, it's the residents collecting the samples, and then they're telling us that we're not either collecting them properly or we're not collecting them enough. There's, there's a, a 97 page system, a uh, citizen science investigation report that's been posted on the Abe Mouth Dust Forum. Uh, we sent off samples from various properties that have captured both metal and grain dust, etc., in specific quantities. It's all quite worrying. There's a table on page uh, 73. 73. Yeah. And also the demolition site, the old site. Yeah, it, it, you, you'd be. There's dust water down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it means a major, major hazard. So, so this whole dust thing is is still a very much an open book and open conversation, isn't it? Very much. We're still getting dust every day to varying degrees of okay. different sorts. Of our homes, vehicles, gardens, and everything. Right. We've got black patio set, and every morning it is <coughs> well, like brown. <laughs> okay. Right. Can I just um, bring in the dust? Just, just to back the, the dust thing up on Thursday morning. I've got some people from the environment agency coming to take water samples out of my fish pond. Right. Because there's black bits, there's nothing in it, the same as the residents are getting in their windowsills, in their carpets, on their washing, in their gardens, on their pets, in their clothes. So I've got the environment agency coming down to take samples of water and everything else I can give them <coughs> out of my fish pond. So they can take that away yeah. for a second time <coughs> and tell us there's lots of masses in it and don't want to do anything about it. 
Right, thank you. Can, anybody else want to? Can I just ask? Um, do you know that? Oh, Christine, yeah, the, the meetings you've been attending is that open to other residents to attend, or from this, people the, wanted the, to attend that? The, the original meeting that started the all off was popped up after we pressurised from here and many other meetings yeah. that we wanted regular meetings with the port company, the environment agency, the city council, Sims Metal, other businesses on the port, yeah. and everybody else in the area that was affected right. with residents. We eventually got one arranged, which was done with was it two days notice. Yeah, it was minimal. Two days notice right. saying that this had been arranged, these people were coming, can you get there? So we had a quick ring round of people that we knew that right. we could get okay. there quickly. Doing which was a mini group that goes to these meetings. This is only yeah. the second one we've had. Okay, sure. um, so then we're trying to get them coordinated so that those meetings happen a week or two before this meeting right. on a regular basis so that then we can report back here. Okay. And if there's any concerns come for it, most people around in the meeting here will know one or other of us that goes to those okay. meetings and can pass questions on and we can take it back and then come back here with the answers, hopefully. Would you want to, uh, anyone else is interested to join you at those meetings? Is that possible? It wasn't our decision, but we're quite happy to have other people come along. Yeah, I mean, they don't, right. want, they don't want the meeting to get big. They just want to keep the sure. council and the environment agency want to keep it small. Right. But, I mean, obviously, if there's you know, two or three more people that want to come along on a regular basis, that's fine, because there's always yeah. going to be times when one person can't yeah. get there. And we need yeah. fresh input all the time. Sure. Uh, okay. So is it open? okay to throw that open then? To say, is there anybody who would like to be part of these meetings that go, that go on? Yeah, that's fine. Sure, they are. They are. To, to be fair, the, the subject matter is quite dry. Right. You know, we're talking points of law, we're talking regulatory frameworks, we're talking, you know, measurements, that kind of stuff. And, right. and uh, so, it's not about bins. Yeah. No. And guys. It is a bit about people's experience. Uh, yeah, yeah, to yeah. a degree, but it's more about the coordinated response between yeah. the regulatory authorities, yeah, and and Bristol City Council. Okay. Um, to to manage the problem, to um, improve the uh, emissions that are coming out of the docks and the, and the regulated businesses therein. Okay. So so yeah, by all means, we're, we're up for anybody coming. Okay. Anybody would, would want to join that group to to, to spread it out? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is that all right? Great. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. All right. So um, if we can then invite. And I wrote it down, so I should be able to remember it. Renewable energy and action. Thank you. Oh, excuse Would you me. Have we finished with the... Oh, sorry, I was, I was supposing to have, but obviously we haven't. Sorry. Sir. Would you like to say something? Yeah, it's just this about the um, regulations on the docks, and we're going back to the ply issue, really, in a way. Right. Okay. Only I rang Arnold Miller. Everyone knows Arnold. And um, because I couldn't understand, if you read here, it's saying that that none of the lorries will be allowed on the dock. This came through on a planning report. And there's, you could see them puffing their chest up with importance. None of these lorries will be allowed on the dock until the ship arrived. Right. Well, that's lovely, but where are those lorries going to be waiting with all this um, mass of stuff that's been causing the flies, even if it was wrapped 18 times? I could envisage it all round Dagon but you see, it's written here, there are, that isn't on the docks, we understand it's not on the port, no, but it is on port lap, it is actually down at Chitlin, under like, um, what would you call it, like a Dutch barn, waiting, all wrapped up. Is it where, it's enclosed warehouse, properly enclosed empty warehouse? No, you told to? me it wasn't enclosed. You're a very astute lady. Can we get an answer? Does Matt um, see uh, he's got something he wants to add into this? Yes, and what we're saying is that the King's Horridge go down, which is lovely, that's, that's fine. But don't everyone that thinks they've been round the dock and they can't see anything on there, all right, it's not on the port, but believe me, it's down past Chitlin. Now I asked Arnold, why couldn't it go in Holmes Mouth Gate? Why does it all have to come up on these lorries? They're great big pale blue bells apparently, 20 to a lorry. Why does it have to come up St Andrew's Road? He said we can't authorise them to do that. Well, I think they can. Well, if it went in through Holesmouth, we wouldn't even have to see it. We, it, would, it would be, they're saying six lorries, it's not. 
If we talk lorry movements, it's hundreds of lorry movements, but only six lorries involved. They go backwards and forwards, King's Haulage. But if that actually went through Holesmouth, it wouldn't be coming along St Andrew's Road at all. And well, sure, yeah. for the couple of days of a month or whatever it is, if it's open, sure, <coughs> then it's being, you know, taken onto the ship, then surely it could go down through the dock. Well, yeah, that obviously sounds like a great idea, and obviously that would be a great thing for happen. But the problem is, keeping the process, the process is all done within a warehouse. It's um, wrapped up and then chewed up, basically rubbish. You wrapped up inside a warehouse. It's, it's, it's stored in a warehouse. warehouse. It's stored inside a warehouse. And enclosed warehouse. Enclosed within a warehouse. Absolutely. Like, I visited the yeah. site the other day. It's closed within the warehouse. Ordered by the big bells. In fact, I'm very upset because it, they lost a bit of space within the warehouse to operate this way. Um, so it's all under, under, under wraps, basically all a great a decent process. When it leaves there, it comes all the way down, well, St. Andrew's Road. Initially, it's, it's the coast road, and then St. Andrew's Road, and it comes along directly into the port and then onto the lorries. Yeah, obviously, the only way I can get better, basically, is either for it not to happen or for it to go through a horse mouth at the very end. But it's annoying me because we've had all these, these um, invites around the port. And there's no sign of it. Well, no, admittedly, it's not in the port, but it's still down there. People think it's gone. It's well, it's not. not. It's, it's, it's technically, yes, yeah, the very end of the main ward, basically, in, in, um, just before the Hallow Lanes, where people can stay. And again, there's, there's plenty of other sort of uh, refuge sites in Eagle Mouth and power stations. And all I can say is that I've been there and visited and seen the process, and it's, it's completely changed, basically, because of the work that the Eagle Mouth you know, Forum has done. Basically, they've had to improve their process massively. So I've gone on and witnessed that. And yeah, all it says is indoors, it's part of the lorry, it's indoors. They've driven out of the warehouse, down the long road into the docks. I mean, short of going through a different gate, further up that way, it yeah, couldn't get any better. Be, I'm sure if it's a couple of days a month, then why can't that be a well, yeah, it's just definitely worth the question. Have to pay for so so we, could, we could take that back well, as our question then. So with Horsemouth, sorry, again. Horsemouth Gate. H A W E S. H O L E S. H O L E S. Thank you. Well, Wayne can answer that, can you, Wayne? Is there any reason why it can't go through whole thing, Steve? I'm not sure uh, I'm going to get a break, but uh, I'm not sure. I have a question, Matt. Sorry, before we move on from that. We've had an awful smell in Aidenmouth over the last three, four days, week. Now, uh, I, I did some citizens investigations along with another one of our number in this room, um, and we discovered that newer solutions are also emitting a foul odour. Uh, and the reason being is that they're taking all their RDF bales out and they're storing them outside, which is a lot closer oh. than Boomer Cove. Yeah, it's just down the road here, which might explain a lot to do with the amount of flies that we've been getting around here. So yeah. what are the council yeah. doing about regularly inspecting that site and, and making them keep stuff inside, inside before they bus it onto the dock? Following on from that, wasn't it new words that put the conditions on triangles? This is, this is absolutely so correct. It has to be stored inside. So if they're telling the companies that are working for them it has to be stored inside, then they should be following that process as well as per the license and permits. And I've got, I've got their engineering yeah. manager on tape on, on Sunday, Sorry, just gone. May I have you report that to um, the council and Arnold and all the other people? Uh, I haven't reported it as of yet because it's a regulated process. One would assume that this so is detailed and accepted as safe by the Council and the Environment Agency. Oh, okay. On this forum, <laughs> we will report that there's a smell from new earth solutions, solutions to I think, our I, think, I think it's believed to be from new earth solutions. Okay. Or West 6 or whatever. Okay. Okay. Not necessarily from new earth solutions. Many residents have reported it over the weekend to the council and to the environment agency. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Bristol City Council, Environment Agency, pull your fingers out and give them a beating, tell them to keep it in and, and do exactly the same as Boomerco are doing. So, and, and the company that this is, that's doing this is the New Earth Solutions? New Earth Solutions, yeah. I believe it's a partnership company with Bristol City Council in the west of England. Okay. Partnership in the west of England. Okay, I would now like to suggest that we move on in terms of time, if that's all right. We've, obviously, this is going to come back to the next forum. We've got some actions to take. There's this meeting that's going to happen. People want to be part of that. Talk to Christine. <coughs> okay, thank you. Right, so if we have, have um, renewable energy in action. Thanks, Sam. I'm the last person you actually want to hear from, uh, given all the problems that uh, have occurred over the last six months or seven months as far as climate is etc. Hopefully, we will not be contributing to that. There is a planning application in on part of the old Sabalco site uh, on Chittenden Road, which, if anybody doesn't know exactly where it is, we've got some maps at the back that uh, when there's a break, of, theoretically about 7.30, which gives me five minutes, um, you can have a look and see exactly where we are operating. It's about a 22 acre site in total. Uh, it operated for 50 years by Sabaco to produce uh, carbon back from oil that came in from the oil dock at uh, Bristol Port. Um, they stopped operating two years ago, five years ago. Um, and for the last two years, the site has been fully remediated uh, and it is now back to a brownfield site in essence, with lots of concrete and absolutely nothing else on it. Uh, we are taking a corner, or the plan is to take a corner of the site, of the total of 22, we'll have about three acres. On that, we'll have a, a building construction uh, to house the plant that we're operating. And the intention is to actually use rubber tires, end of life tires, which will be ground down to rubber crumb. The rubber crumb will then go into a, an advanced technology process which is called thermodynamic cracking. And all that means is that within a totally enclosed uh, unit which is smaller than this hall, uh, you, and certainly nowhere near as high, uh, you will have a combination of modest temperature, 350 to 400 degrees C, some pressure and some vibration, and that will break the rubber down to its constituent parts. It will gasify all internally, uh, and out of that will come synthetic diesel, synthetic LPG, and carbon. And those are the only three products that will be produced from it. What about the steel that's in the tire? The steel from the tire will be extracted when the rubber crumb is produced and will be taken out and sold as scrap steel. Sims Mel. <laughs> the, um, the net of, of that is that we've, we've taken something which is difficult to dispose of because the suppliers can no longer go to landfill. Um, <coughs> and we're producing synthetic diesel and LPG. The synthetic diesel can be used for road transport, or in our case, we're proposing to use it to produce renewable electricity. And we've got a link through to Seabank Car Station for 2.75 megawatts, which isn't a lot compared with some of the major power stations that are being built uh, or planned to be built in the area. Uh, but it's about enough to power about 5,000 houses. Um, as far as the plant is concerned, there's very little noise. As I say, it's emission free in terms of its operation. Um, there is no smell that's coming from it, uh, and we are proposing about 22 roughly new jobs. Uh, it will operate on a 24 7 basis. Um, that means three ships and a spare ship in terms of uh, the working operation. But there are no residential homes immediately in the vicinity, so we don't see that there should be too many problems. Um, and that's, that's fundamentally it. How do you get the tires into the site? By lorry, um, and they will come either in lorries with the sides down or in 40 foot containers. What about storage for the tires? The internal, within the building. 
if any that are not in the building will be in 40 foot containers and parked and locked. Wayne? Okay, just interesting in the job uh, survey. 22 jobs, is it a highly skilled job? No, um, we, we will need obviously a, a, a couple of engineers who will be able to look after the, the technology. Uh, apart from that, we'll have supervisors and there'll be relatively, we'll, we'll train people on site, but uh, it will be relatively less skilled. Okay, just a point interesting in the fact that we've actually got a job club in it when Andy is right due to the liaison in the hope that local people will get local jobs. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. How many other subjects do you have? Sorry? How many other subjects do you have? We've, we've had one which we've developed down at Portland in Dorset. Uh, it was originally planned for liquid biomass. We sold that and it was developed as a peaking plant, which is the plants that are used when there's a desperate need for additional electricity during peak times and so on and so forth. So it doesn't run 24-7, it's only it's pulled in when it's needed. Uh, we've got a second company that is operating to build a similar plant to the one we're talking about here at Portland, um, but that, that will end up being probably after um, the one at Avonmouth, which is planned for 2015. <coughs> Okay, the lady in the purple. Here we go again. How many more lorry movements, please? Sorry, Kekka. How many more lorry movements? I guess the How many more I lorry movements? <laughs> I will. I've got it in my kit. And because I'll it all comes down to St Andrew's Road off the motorway, you say? The, certainly, from a, um, a local planning standpoint um, and a Bristol City Council standpoint, an environment agency standpoint. It wasn't the number of lorries which is coming in at two or three a day. Uh, it's not going to be a major issue. Two or three a day. But it's all two or three a day? Yeah. Nine a day? In nine. Nine. They won't all be great big ones. Some three times as much as that. Okay, so Ian? Yeah. Um, three questions, if I may. Will you be paying the living wage to your employees? Yes. <laughs> Where do you live? <laughs> yeah. Um, near London. Near London, so well away from the, the blast radius, for want of a better word. But uh, there are people from the team that are living locally. Tom is local. And what do we get as residents? Are you going to knock some money off our electorate bills? <laughs> well, it's a serious question. I don't think that'll be our call because we're putting it into the grid. Will you be investing in the village then? Well, we'll, we'll be investing in roughly 12 million in. The site itself. That's in your business. What about where's, where's our payback? Is what we're saying. Will you support your residents? Tell us what you want us to do. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Pay our contact. Yeah. Oh my But first, within reason. First and foremost. First. Tell us what you want us to do. First and foremost, living wage for the people that work there. Sorry. Yeah, a living wage for the people that work there. Well, Guaranteed fine. hours, a real job, yeah. contributory pension, etc. Yeah, probably final service pension, you know, final salary pension if they can get it. You know, because they're going to be, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, it's, it's a terrible thing for a buccaneer to, you know, hear. You know, but something back for the village. You know, and not just Avonmouth Village. You've got Shirehampton, you've got Lawrence West, and we're all going to be breathing this crap in. Yeah, and it will be emitting crap. Yeah, <laughs> it will be a minute. It's the mission free. Yeah. 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 Yeah
So, I just finally, just before we go to the top topic tables, I want to just invite Helen, who's not very good at being very concise, um, to talk about 20 mile an hour world map. Oh dear. Uh, um, yeah, hi. Um, thanks for having me back. I came along, I think it was the beginning of the year, when I uh, first talked to you about uh, creating 20 mile an hour global roads. A lot of you will have seen in the press recently, this is a city wide project. In Avonmouth particularly, I have a map of my topic table, so come over and have a look at it. Um, we did some informal consultation with you, as I say, it was almost the beginning of the year, um, where a lot of people came here and sat the back over there, and a lot of people were quite happy with 20 on residential roads, but wanted the main roads to be left as they are. Um, so that's pretty much what we've reflected in the plans. Come over and have a chat with me. I just wanted to give you some idea of time scales for this, um, for this area. The plan is that we will now go through formal consultation, which is the speed limit order, that's the, like, the legal section of the, uh, of the process. That will start, um, the likelihood for the formal consultation will be the end of October. So we've got a little bit of time between now and then to make any changes that we they have been flagged up today. Um, that will take um, about four weeks for the consultation process to go through, um, and then I have to write a report, etc. and there's quite a lot of uh, legal work they have to go through. So it, it's quite a long process. To uh, finish it um, by March. Bear in mind, Avonmouth is part of my phase five, which covers quite a long, um, quite a wide area. So it includes um, Lawrence West and it goes all the way to Southampton as well. So that's why it takes uh, sort of two months to implement something like that. So I just wanted to give you some idea of dates. Um, come to the topic table, we'll have a look at the map, um, and uh, let me know if you have any, any comments or any inquiries on it. Yes. Two, if I may. Yes. Sorry, guys. Um, is this a bylaw? Okay, who will legally enforce it? It will be down to the police. Okay. I mean, we have just, um, we are working with Avon Somerset Police locally. We are looking at enforcing it in two or three different ways, ranging from community speed watches, which you, you know, basically rely on volunteers from the local community. That is working very well in some places, not so well in others, so we're looking to put some money towards that. If anyone knows what that is, I don't know if you've got one that work up here, I can't remember. I was actually contacted a couple of months ago and I've heard nothing since. <laughs> the, 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 the reason for my question, sorry to interrupt you Terry, okay. is that we've got a major issue with lorries parking around by the dock gate, yeah? That it's got a traffic regulation order in, in force, yeah. so we've got double yellows there, yeah? We've got a no seven and a half ton and above, yeah? The signs are old, and whenever we've come to this forum, we get told that the police won't deal with it, traffic won't deal with it, Council won't deal with it. Who's going to deal with it? Because if you're going to put an extra signage, because I assume there's going to be 20 miles an hour painted everywhere and stuck everywhere, yeah. So let's get that lot down there cleaned up, because that might get rid of some of the prostitution that people have mentioned around there. Because there's a market there. It might also get rid of some of the people peeing all over the place. Yeah, because there's also a market down there. Uh, I've got nothing against nothing against truckers coming to Avonmouth. You know, that's, that's what they do. But there's a truck park down the road that's losing a lot of money. Yeah. So let's get it. If you're going to do that down here, then do the rest of it, innit? Enforce the well, laws that are already here. That we do as part of projects. When we go out and about and put up the signs and the we take down any old and dumpy ones. Right. The street furniture, etc. is wrong. So we, could, we, we, only, we can't deal with any traffic regulation orders as part of this. It's the other half of the legal order. This is a speed limit order. But with regards to what you're talking about, enforcement, etc., that, that is a separate topic for us. So it's something we could um, look at back in the house. And well, you can have a look when you walk around the corner on the way back. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Wayne, I think you wanted to say something. Yeah. Well, get your deep mic. Thank you. We're actually digressing a little bit because it's, it's 20 mile an hour, but just to answer it, there has been a four traffic survey carried out in the village of Avonway. Um, they've identified 16 signs. It will be replaced uh, for one reason or another. Some bleaching and things. And also, there's going to be a weight limit <coughs> sign on that railway, which is so for everybody in the room. Here on that, and that will be rolled out through the neighbourhood partnerships with the highways uh, this year, this year's project. So no more lorries down by the world then? No. So, so no more lorries down by the world then? Right. 
summer speed size. No, no, it, it's all in the planning process. We've been up to Wilder Street, Matt and myself, we've sat down with all the um, officers, and it will all be done and phased in, you know, in a proper orderly manner rather than ad hoc just take them out. Sorry, Jenny. Apple. It's the same as here. We sat down with all the officers for a few hours. They were asking for people. Okay. If I may, there's just one thing to pick Christine up. I didn't interject because it was rolling on. And I'm going right back to the beginning of the meeting now. Uh, we were told the, about the dust monitoring at Avery CLE School. The reason is that went in late is because they were all school holiday. It was all on lockdown. And these, these type of monitoring systems require power so that they couldn't actually gain access onto the site to put this monitoring in place. That was a reason for the delay. Oh, okay. Okay, just for clar clarification. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Wayne. Um, I have missed out council <coughs> issues. Is there anything you want to add or throw in? Uh, Sorry, throw in. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Just a couple of sort of well, hopefully positive points. Um, you might be well aware of some of the publicity coming through the um, sort of leaflet street or maybe um, we were working hard with the local MP in order to renovate the local train station. It's been highlighted and um, your MP is basically taking that to the very top to try and get some money spent on the train station. Um, that links into the heavy route, which is still a priority for myself and me, and um, sort of Charlotte as your MP, and then cross party working really across most parties and sort of um, councillors that it basically goes for their ward. So, what we're trying to do is open up the old Embry Loop to join up the two train stations, basically, which will see a, an increase in trains going by and a, a better sort of regular sort of, sort of transport thing for us, basically. Um, apart from that, I mean, myself and Wayne, um, after all the travel issues we had within the ward, um, obviously, my friend um, Shahamdan are very keen to try and sort of hold down a few officers and toughen up some of the laws that surround getting rid of the gypsies, basically. <coughs> Travel so as quick uh, as possible because I mean, the general consensus among most residents wherever you go is that it takes too long and it's very frustrating to see them there when you think, well, hang on, you know, it takes them two minutes to come out and ask for their council tax, but it takes them, you know, two months to get rid of the caravan. So, um, that's the sort of things that we're trying to do, just sort of working at some of the issues and keep plugging away them, and hopefully, some of the more positive things that can come out of um, this war, not around the gates of the negative things. Just to add with the travellers, recently camp with we experienced up on King's Western, they were moved and dealt with very swiftly. And I did send an email to the our neighbourhood policing team, so I just wanted to thank them publicly for that because uh, that was really swift action. Just just a couple of things. Um, we've been working with uh, David Martin, and for people who don't know David Martin, he heads up Quack, he's a King's Western Action Group, and. Um, He's keen to uh, celebrate next year at Avon Mouth 150, uh, Phillips uh, Square Mars, the foundation of the railway, the Pier Hotel, and Avon Mouth is, as a whole, the history of Avon Mouth. And just really going around recording local buildings, and he's opening to incorporate that with the mayor and make something special, to make Avon Mouth special, or our work special, and try and do things for, for the local people. And we can actually phase that in with the Green Capital. Uh, hopefully we can get the funding for that. It costs quite, quite a substantial amount, but we're quite confident that you know we will be able to do that and actually put Avon Mouth on the map because uh, Bristol as a whole has got a rich maritime history. So it'd be good to look back with uh, Brunel's achievements with the rail and things like that and actually um, incorporate that in with Avon Mouth. Um, just, just one thing because I'm conscious of the time. Um, we've been working um, with Ian Smith, just sat to my right. Um, we were invited to meet Ian, Matt and myself, and April came in. Um, Ian's uh, really keen to end the year in some sort of positive note rather than a negative note. So, a bit, a, bit, a bit of work's been done in the background, you know, trying to raise funding. And some of the ideas Ian's raised with us is absolutely excellent. We, we as councillors, and along with the police as well, we're going to try and support you as best as we can. Um, we've actually got a meeting this Wednesday for one of the ideas, uh, and it's down here at 7 o'clock, everybody's welcome by the way. Um, Ian would like to see a Christmas tree in the park uh, for the children to, you know, to see. 
uh, we've sourced um, fencing from a, a local fencing company to make that tree safe. Um, also, Ian has been and spoke to a security company who's going to do drive-bys because it's not just here, right? if it's anywhere in the city, you've got to get a tree, it's going to get damaged, so it's trying to protect the tree, but just um, really to sort of uh, build the community spirit back up. So hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll see you Wednesday and get involved and start preparing things for them. Yeah. Anything you want to add on that? Yeah. Yeah. Wayne, you're 150th. Are you going to do a drive? Just do your gentleman at the back. He, to be fair, will lose his arm. Getting on to the, going back to the railway thing, the railway station that was thought about for the park and ride. What's that? Was that was was? Is this true that money was in place to actually? Sort that out, but George pinched it for his park and wife for Clifton. So <laughs> money was in place for <laughs> so money was in place for for a, a railway platform at the park and ride. I do believe it was probably all in place to actually happen and George pinched it for his park and wife for Clifton. No, I, I, I can clarify um, the, the Portway Park and Ride will have its own rail station in the spring of 2016. The money is all secure. Initially, it was going to be uh, very, very expensive because they thought it was double track, but now they said it's single track. So, I mean, well, for a better explanation, it's just a glorified bus shuttle. So, obviously, it's less less expense, and that will go ahead in 2016. 100 grand for that. Anybody actually There's meetings coming up shortly with the port of rail and things like that. I think we've been invited along to. So, hopefully, we can feed that back as and when we know. Yeah, I mean, I know that, uh, there's a letter coming from my other Labour departure, Henry Southmead, uh, asking the North Labour departure to support Henry Lou. And that uh, was a conversation with our last partnership about the relationship with the port, etc., etc. I mean, I think the short answer is when there's a will, there's a way of uh, uh, negotiating it, but it is to be said, well, just put it to the here, and then maybe then, then we do need to move to the table, so that's all right, yeah? Um, when we came to your surgery, you said you had asked the residents what they thought of this Christmas tree idea, and you said residents were all for it. What residents did you actually ask? Because I've mentioned it on the dust forum and schools and everybody, and nobody knows anything about it, this £5,000 Christmas tree. Um, and personally, I think this £5,000 would go to a hell of a lot better use than a tree that's going to be there for a couple of weeks. Who did you ask? Because nobody knows anything about it. Nobody wants it. First of all, Madam Lund, it was my surgery, and not his. All right. I, we were saying having a private meeting, which you promptly interrupted, basically. And um, no, you actually asked. He was at the meeting. No, that's fine. No, no. I just had to go, okay. No, I'll just say one more thing. Yeah, let's just um, have the, one person talking to time. The meeting that we now mentioned, basically, for this Monday, Wednesday, is the, you're all invited, as he mentioned, and that's one of the topics on the discussion for that day, for what we want to do with our money that we've raised. It might not necessarily be Christmas tree, but that's the only idea we've had. And it's a committee to improve the sort of morale in the area. It's a committee to try and spend some money on something positive. If you come along and you have a better idea to spend some money on something positive, then we'll hear your views. It's not my money, it's the committee's money. Certain companies are giving money towards this. Certain companies have promised some um, sort, of, sort of sillies. That's all we can do. So if you want to come along and ask them and, and give us an idea. So who's on this committee? The front of the north of it, the Wednesday, the first meeting, it's yeah. 7 o'clock, as we mentioned, you're all invited, he's coming on, give your ideas. Again, two okay. days notice. So that's an invitation, so 7 o'clock here, yes. okay, 7 o'clock here, you're welcome to come, um, and the lady there. Yeah, just a quickie, because this is really passionate to me, is the old bus depot, are you going to travel around in the other direction when you do your 150 year bypass? Because surely you're not going to take anybody past that best, best depot, which is a grade two listed building, the state it's in. If everyone was to go up Westbury Hill, past the, the post, mm. the pub called the post office, and see the majestic wine company, what they how they've had to keep that, that bus depot up there, which is built by the same man that built this one. Now, how are you going to bring anyone past <coughs> that bus depot in the state that it's in, Wayne? And don't tell me it's privately owned. The council sold that, and that the state that's in, that's the grade two listed. <coughs> yeah. 
Now, what are you going to do about that? Give it a flash over yeah. with a bit of paint or what? Yeah. To be honest, Jean, I don't know. Um, like David Quay, um, David Quay, David Martin from Quay sat down to the meeting there and he raised it with the mayor. It was just a, a conversation for him, but I got bullet point notes on that, but I don't know what his plan is. Put two bullet notes against that then, because that's going to be shocking anybody coming down yeah. past that. Is it, is it something that, um, just thinking ahead, so is it something that we could ask David to come to the forum next time to kind of talk through? Because yeah, I'm sure you'd be very happy to There's nothing David share. can do. It needs someone to push it because it's a grade two listed building. Right, yeah, so it's quite a... And it is privately owned. Yeah, it's George. Yeah, that's George. So is that acceptable if we ask David to come along to the next uh, meeting to share his thoughts? Sorry, just a quickie, Keith. I did ask George and he was going to email me and that was been two years ago. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Living hope, we do Come and talk to me during the... During the um, oh. So the table things. I, I don't understand the details, so it would be useful to have to go There is some clangor that's responsible for grade two listed buildings. I got their address somewhere. Yeah, there is, out they're here. not interested either. They got to, by the way. This is Avon, No, they don't. They okay, them. right, so the tables, the um, topping tables, let's move on to that. So the police are going to host a conversation here around this table, is that right? Okay. Um, the. Um, Ria, <laughs> I've forgotten what that stands for. The Ria people oh, yeah. have got their mats laid out next door. So do go take a look at that and have your conversations there. Um, 20 mile an hour. Um, Official name for Helen, if you want to go Ria. through to the other table at the back there, there's a bit of space to lay out the mats. Um, in terms of. What was the other one? Um, they're fucking good, are they? There's a general, a general one that um, will have, it's a bit gloomy down there, isn't it? So, we'll, we'll put the lights on, but we'll, we'll do that over in the corner, over there. And, uh, and uh, Christine, do you want to have a table? Perfect. Oh, okay, well, people just go and chat to Christine if you're interested in joining that group, etc. Thank you very much. So, you want to just mingle around and move the table? We'll take about 20 minutes on this. Matt, can you just go and chat with Christine? Yes, yeah, yeah, so we can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we'll do that then. Yeah, I think we should just take a few minutes and just move the table around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we'll just take a few minutes on this. Got love of bag. <laughs> yeah, fair shape. You know you're gonna monitor all these whatever, the smells and everything. Yeah. yeah.